Good afternoon, everyone, and again, welcome to today's webinar, Revenue Metrics for Revenue Marketers. My name is Megan Lockwood, and I'm the head of content at eDynamic, and I'm really thrilled today to be joined by Warren Raish, who is president of eDynamic, and Shilpa Gupta, our analytics director. So we really have two great senior level resources so that you can pick their brains today. Warren is a business and thought leader with vast experience working as a senior executive in leading high-tech companies including Apple, 3Com, HP, and Adobe divisions, as well as digital agencies including the big Ds, Digitas and Digitaria. He has worked with some of the largest brands in the world, developing and executing their digital strategies. He is a people's person with customer-centric approach, and he's passionate about all things di digital. Shilpa also has vast experience in digital marketing and digital analysis, and specifically, she has an in-depth knowledge of digital tools like Google Analytics, Web Trends, Site Catalyst, Dart, Atlas for Report Central, Radian 6, AdWords, and many more. In today's presentation, we're going to review how to build a revenue analytics measurement plan, how to build new relationships within your sales organization, and how to transform your marketing organization from a cost center into a revenue center. And I'll tell you that Warren also runs our sales team, so make sure that you ask him some questions because he really is a great resource for me and I'm sure for you as well. We'll also have a question and answer session at the end, so please send us any questions you have and we'll make sure to answer them immediately and in, in real time. And just one final question because people ask it quite a bit. We will be sending out a recording of this video and the slides afterwards, so you should be able to get them and we'll send them to you within 48 hours via email. And now, without further ado, over to Warren and Shilpa. Hey, Megan. Thank you very much for the introduction. Great to be here. And uh, this is uh, one of those topics that's kind of near and dear to my heart. I've uh, been on uh, both the marketing side, you know, client side, as well as agency side for years. And one of the topics that comes up frequently is, you know, how do you drive ROI around the marketing efforts that we're doing? So. Um, today we're really going to focus on the, uh, the revenue metrics uh, for revenue marketers. So let's dive in and uh, we will go from there. One moment, let me tee this up. Okay. So first of all, let's start with the big picture of why this really matters. As we talked about, if you've been following this series a little bit, uh, we've launched something called the Revenue Imperative which is uh, basically driving market research uh, across the industry right now, and it's also tracking industry trends. And roughly 50% of all B2B marketers now currently have direct revenue accountability as part of their job description and part of their uh, their bonus plan and comp plan. So it's one of those trends that's uh, not you know coming in the future. Basically, it's here right now uh, with over half of your counterparts already in this situation right now where they're uh, driving against a revenue number. So what that means is that you know B2B marketers and B2C as well are really reaching prospects earlier, early, earlier in the sales cycle, and they're staying engaged uh, deeper into the uh, buying process, uh, well past passing a lead over to the sales organization, uh, deep into actually the whole sales cycle. Marketers are under a lot of pressure right now to produce more and more content and activities. So uh, basically those activities are now being held accountable to a higher standard, which is to drive revenue. Uh, and it's transforming basically how uh, and where uh, marketers are engaging uh, across channels and also across their organizations. Um, they're getting deeper involved, like I said, with the sales organization. So there's a tighter alliance uh, that's being forged there right now. Um, and there's new uh, marketing revenue performance metrics that are being built into the uh, into the organization and into the expectations from the C-suite. If you look at recent uh, uh, poll of CEOs and where their uh, focus is right now, you see that the top area of focus for the company is increased sales and revenue. So that's directly reflective on what's happening in the, uh, in the marketing ranks. So really the number one goal for a modern marketer right now is to basically generate uh, demand and then turn that demand into uh, revenue impacting uh, results. So marketers are used to measuring uh, against you know campaign performance, uh, channel performance, things like that. 
Uh, now the, uh, the with the advent of kind of big data coming in, there's a massive amount of numbers that are available. And as you know, with every customer touch point, there is a uh, kind of a lead behind of analytics and uh, kind of footprints of where they've been and where they're going, that sort of thing. So big data gives us the ability to actually capture all of that data. The challenge really is how do you take it down to nugget, nugget size um, chunks so you can actually action it and get insights out of it. So we'll be giving you some insights today about how to really focus your uh, marketing activities around uh, revenue impact. And uh, one key trend that we're seeing is that revenue metrics are trumping activity metrics. For years, we as marketers have been held accountable for activities, things like how many trade shows do we do in events, how many campaigns are we running, those sort of things. So it was more like numbers around activities. Right now it's more numbers around uh, revenue impact that's basically becoming the top priority. And the good news is that marketing technologies are becoming a critical component of that. So there are tools now that automate this capture and uh, even bring it together in uh, you know highly visible uh, dashboards, things like that. So the, uh, the good news is that you're not alone. Uh, there are technology solutions that actually can help you gather these um, in a real-time fashion if you need it uh, that fast. The big trend really is moving from a uh, cost center for an organization moving into a revenue center model. So uh, this is, you know, shaking up marketing organizations quite a bit and uh, causing them to rethink their uh, their activities and their, their comp plan and things like that. So just something to be aware of now that that's the, the vantage point of the C-suite is really looking at marketing as a, as a revenue center. So if you really want to start influencing and you know driving your career in the right direction, tie yourself to revenue. It's a little bit scary um, because your the visibility and the accountability are um, you know pretty sharp. You know they're basically looking at you know hard numbers of everything you do. So for some marketers this might be a scary proposition, but I would encourage you to embrace the change and uh, get in get in front of it and actually be a uh, kind of a thought leader and a driver in your organization. Um, because the reality is that this isn't going to go away. I think this is going to be just more and more of the uh, the new normal. So you might as well get ahead of it and actually use it as a career enhancing opportunity and raise your hand and say, okay, I'd like to you know tie my uh, my compensation and my performance reviews on on revenue impact. And I think if you're kind of a forerunner in this area, you'll get some grace and maybe forgiveness for some early. Uh, failures if you're if you're uh, you know trying things and are not working but if you're failing quickly and adjusting I think the uh, the c-suite and your management uh, will actually appreciate the fact that you're stepping up and trying things so as long as you set expectations properly with uh, with leadership and the organization that you're going to try different things you're going to try to move the needle on uh, revenue I think you'll um, you'll get a um, you know a good support from the organization as long as you don't, you know, promise that it's going to be, you know, a hard line deliverable, but say, okay, we're going to, we're going to test this new, uh, this new ground and really, you know, optimize ourselves uh, to be a revenue center for the company. Or, and I tend to couch that as we've got a learning out of this particular campaign instead of a lift, and that yeah. tends to work. <laughs> That's good. I like that exactly. And it's true. I mean, you know, even though this is a new, uh, you know, revenue imperative we're talking about, the whole test and learn model has been part of marketing uh, as long as I've been in the space. So, it's uh, it's it's nothing new for the uh, for the for the management to see that we're trying things. So, I think the worst thing you can do is try to avoid it, and uh, you know, because it's going to come one way or another. So, people that have actually stepped up and started taking a more proactive approach to this are actually creating new roles and positions for themselves in companies. So you'll see new positions emerging like chief revenue officer or VP of revenue marketing, um, even uh, directors of revenue centers of excellence. Those kind of roles are are being um, um, you know defined and created in organizations. So this once again, it could be a career lifting opportunity for you to actually step up into one of these roles. So uh, I encourage you to you know look for the opportunities in the change. So the big question is, you know, does your organization have a revenue marketing uh, metrics mindset? So let's take a look at that right now and see what that might look like. So as I mentioned earlier, it's really shifting from an activity-based metric uh, mindset to a revenue-based mindset. The uh, the news around this one really is that you're not off the hook on the activity ones, though. Um, you still are going to be held fully accountable for how many trade shows you do, campaigns you do, that sort of thing. So this is actually additive to your uh, to your role. 
um, you're now just going to be held accountable to what is the revenue impact of those activities. So all those uh, those metrics of activity are still relevant and still uh, you know should be reported to management. But now you have to add another column on those spreadsheets or you know dashboards and start looking at uh, tie back to revenue. So what's important? Which metrics really matter? Uh, one of the key areas, really, if you look at it, is kind of the uh, the sales impact that you have. Um, another key area is you know what they call just broadly marketing ROI. So you know what's the return on investment, and, and that well, that we're, we've been used to in marketing for a while as far as media efficiency and reach and scale, those sort of things. So the marketing ROI elements um, are actually relatively fast to get a hold of now. Um, but then where it starts to get into a new territory is really in the area of marketing uh, influence sales. And if you look at this chart here, that's 20, almost 25% of the, uh, the overall um, uh, areas of importance to gauge your success. So that's where the, uh, the new relationship with sales has to be tighter and deeper, and we'll talk about that in the coming slides as well. Obviously, if you're in a uh, direct um, conversion kind of a you know, web-based business or e-business, uh, conversion rates um, can be pretty easy to track if it actually tracks right to a sale. If it doesn't, then you have to get more nuanced with how you look at it, and uh, we look at things called micro-conversions, so basically moving somebody from you know, a landing page to a uh, call to action to actually download a white paper, attend a webinar, you know, uh, reach out, you know, fill out a contact uh, form, some kind of area like that. So you basically you can create um, point systems as to the value of each of those conversions and start showing how ultimately through the customer sales cycle those all have value. And then, you know, more broadly too, even post sales, looking at customer retention uh, and, and growth and experience and engagement metrics are also uh, on the rise. And then, you know, as you get more granular and start having single view of the customer and single view of your, your channel activities, you can start looking at revenue per customer as a metric that you can start tracking. And then the, uh, we'll talk about it a little further later, but the uh, social media metrics. There's been a movement, you know, for everyone to kind of jump into social and part of the rush to social, uh, I think, is that, you know, it, it was kind of the, uh, the toy poodle for a lot of people. They just, you know, they wanted one, and it was cute. Everybody wanted to get into social. So your CEO told you to set up Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and LinkedIn, and you set up all these channels. But it really, for many, it didn't have the thoughtfulness of, you know, what are the business objectives and metrics that we're measuring there. You know, how do you value a share or a like? Um, you know, and you know, what is the influence of that? So, you know, I, I see with a lot of our clients, uh, they're back actually taking a step backwards and saying, okay. We've set up all these outlets. We're getting a sense of you know how challenging it is to keep them refreshed and updated and uh, you know uh, kept from going stale. Um, now let's start looking at the impact of you know what do these spheres of influence really mean for us um, and starting to put thoughtful uh, metrics around those. So we'll talk further about that in the uh, in the coming slides. So the big thing here is you know developing the right mindset for this. You know, business and revenue impacts uh, are basically, you know, the best way to report uh, your business above and beyond your activities and your actions. You have to also start building in a new vocabulary around your metrics. Um, start talking about pipeline metrics, opportunities, uh, revenue generation. There's, you know, basically a, a movement to really kind of, you know, be become a sales enablement, a sales empowerment organization as marketing. Also, I encourage you to be think holistically across your entire customer life cycle, uh, not only for top line revenue growth, but also bottom line profit improvement. So, you can have uh, have revenue impact in in multiple ways. You know, it may not even be revenue that you're driving uh, in this scenario. It might be overall company performance uh, improvement. So, obviously, with marketing, you can look at things like search engine optimization and campaign optimization. You know, generating more quality leads and higher volume, those sort of things. In the sales arena, you know, it can be much more around, uh, you know, all the band system, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then on the service side, you know, as we move more into all things digital, uh, things like customer uh, portals and live chat and cross-selling and upselling, each of these has a metric uh, associated with it that basically can be measured and, uh, and optimized over time. So. I would look across your organization and uh, basically see what the marketing influence is in all of these channels. I read some research the other day where you know they're talking about kind of the exponential growth of uh, kind of digital marketing and how marketing dollars are uh, 
you know, being pulled um, even from IT projects and things in companies, and the shift is going from the CIO to the CMO on uh, on dollar spend. But what's interesting about it, as you read further into the study, is that it almost comes full circle because in order, all these marketing dollars now are being put not only to campaigns and for marketing staff, but they're being built, uh, they're being used to build marketing technology platforms. So it's uh, it's another relationship that you have to be very sensitive to is what is your uh, relationship with your IT organization and can you use this as a win-win scenario to actually uh, forge new relationships there and you know with marketing being in control of the budget that might give them higher visibility and higher control of the tool sets as well so interesting dynamics going on there as well so when you look at the um, you know the sales uh, arena basically you know if you can focus on what we call the strike zone you know, it's basically, you know, where is the sweet spot for, uh, for a salesperson in an organization? Part of it is, you know, the pipeline integrity. It, it's, it's great that marketing and sales work together and, you know, marketing hands over a, uh, a marketing qualified lead. But if 90% of those leads are, you know, unqualified and just a waste of time, you start losing integrity uh, within the sales organization. So uh, what I encourage you to do is actually sit down with the uh, sales organization, you know, walk in their shoes for a little bit and say, okay, what is a, uh, a sales ready lead? You know, and how, how can I help qualify it before I pass it over uh, to sales? And then how can I stay involved? You know, if you look at marketing automation solutions and things like that, which we're very deeply into, um, it typically, particularly for a longer sales cycle um, scenario, uh, the sales people may be engaged and then they may move into a nurturing mode where you're basically, um, you know, nurturing that client for or prospect for sometimes months or years, depending on how big the sales cycle is and how long it is. So, getting involved with those and starting to get metrics around the sales funnel, the conversion rate, the win rates, um, and then even tracking, you know, your influence on the duration of the sales cycle. If you can cut the duration of the sales cycle in half, that has real revenue impact for the company. And how you do that is by having contextual content, having the right frequency of communication and the right context of communication with a client. And then you start looking at win rates, uh, slippage, and, you know, and probability of the opportunities to be, uh, to be successful. So there's, there may be some new language that has to come into your vocabulary and into your dashboards. Some of those will be you know, pretty common um, uh, language like MQLs, SALs, SQLs, and sales revenue. So, Let's take a look at what those KPIs might look like. So one thing is basically defining a common language for the organization is really important because you know some people say I got a lead and it could mean three or four different things to people. You know, a lead might just be that you were at a trade show and you know people threw a business card in so they could win a uh, you know a tablet or something like that. So it's not necessarily a lead. They might just want the you know the chance to win a tablet. So that's not really a qualified lead. Um, so getting a common vernacular or language around uh, around what you call an MQL and a uh, sales accepted lead and a sales qualified lead is important. One of the um, models that we um, you know we look at is you know basically sitting down with your uh, sales organization and looking at the things that matter to them. You know how many leads are produced, what are the close rates on those leads, how much you know revenue per new customer are we getting, are we targeting the right customer, you know how long is it taking to close cost per close, and, and customer lifetime value. These are metrics that really matter to a sales organization. There's a, uh, a pretty commonly used uh, framework for this called BANT, uh, and the initials basically stand for uh, budget. You know, does the lead have budget, authority, need, and uh, purchase time frame to actually spend the money and get the, get the project or do the purchase? So if you can basically look at leads across those four key criteria areas, then it really moves a lead from being just a um, you know an unqualified lead to a qualified lead. So this is kind of the um, you know the Bant uh, model that may basically prepares your lead flow to be more sales ready. So once again, budget, authority, need, time frame, and then you're you know you're doing your data capture and process processing around those and determining the next steps. So by the time it it moves into the hands of either the uh, telesales group or the inside sales organization or your direct uh, sales organization, these are highly qualified uh, metrics-based uh, leads. Another thing we encourage you to do is basically define a, you know, once you're defining your definition of lead, look at the process of the lead flow across your organization. So that, that 
generally falls into two categories. One is uh, looking at the business function, you know, who, who's engaged with the lead um, and how far and deep do they get into that engagement and then what is the process there. So marketing typically is providing the top of funnel um, activities. So they're doing demand generation, they're doing lead capture, they're doing lead qualification, um, moving all the way down to a sales qualified lead and then either inside sales or, or uh, your outside sales organization picks up the, uh, the lead from there and it does opportunity qualification and management and then once it's done you know depending on your organization structure it moves into a delivery mode uh, either by delivering a product or a service and oftentimes there's a customer care or an account management layer that comes in and that gets into more of the full customer lifetime value of uh, you know oftentimes you know you want uh, repeat customers so um, you, what you want to do is stay tethered as a marketing organization to now start looking at upsell and cross-sell opportunities but the key message here is to capture one single centralized data uh, capture of, of this view of the customer experience and then keep everybody apprised of what's going on so you know there's a, a lot of what we call broken customer experiences out there on the internet now where you know your email uh, team is you know blasting out emails asking people to buy the product or service and then you've got your customer care organization that just found out that a customer bought something and they're they're sending a thank you message and you know those those email messages might overlap in someone's email box where they're they're expecting a thank you message but they're still getting bombarded with messages to buy even though they may have bought two days ago or something like that so fixing those broken user experiences can really be solved by having one centralized data capture method and process that everybody follows. Hey Warren, yeah. another piece about SALs and, and MQLs that I, I think is critical but I wanted to hear your thoughts on it is making it iterative so as you get better with this you learn over time and have a communication that it looks like it's exactly aligned right there. Um, mm -hmm. Over time with the sales team what leads really are effective, what make great phone calls, and what are sort of like, yeah, that was okay, but we didn't really get phone calls off of that. Exactly. And, and that's where the open communication comes in. There's too many silos. We've, we've all been talking about this for a year, how organizations are siloed. I can't tell you how many uh, big companies that I work with, and we sit in a meeting, and we, we are, we're hosting a workshop or something, and often, you know, it happens fairly often where people come into the room for the workshop, and it's the first time they've ever met even though they work for the same company, even the same department, but you know the inside sales team's not talking to the outside sales group, and the you know the lead generation team isn't talking to them, and even the email folks are off in their own silos. So, yeah, really having a single view of this uh, is is very important in a single process. And then what I wanted to share on this one was too the that you know IT is another part of this whole thing because you know we. Um, we're seeing more and more uh, marketing automation and marketing tools that are basically helping us scale this. Our goal really is to get to one-to-one -to -one marketing and that's been a goal of marketers uh, for a long time but I'm, uh, I'm happy to report that we're actually in better shape to getting closer to one-to-one -to -one marketing than we've ever been before because of the, uh, the ability to actually scale our solutions through, uh, through technology. So IT has definitely got a seat at the table and they can help us with infrastructure and they can help us with the right systems kind of integrating our CRM and our content management system and our marketing automation tools. All that takes a healthy bit of uh, technology to pull together and integrate and then they can help with uh, you know our reporting as well. So I think uh, IT marketing and sales really need to have newly uh, forged tighter relationships. So I'll pause there. That's kind of the big picture on what's going on. Shilpa is, is a, you know, a, a brilliant practitioner of using all these tools and really bringing them to life. So I'll pass over uh, the presentation to Shilpa now, and uh, I appreciate your time on that. And we'll, we'll regroup at the end of this for questions as well. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Warren. Uh, that was really great. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I head the digital uh, analytics team at eDynamics, and uh, I'll quickly move on to my section, mm -hmm. slide 21. Uh, Warren, if you can skip that uh, uh, for me. So, so a majority of this, uh, how you move from a demand center to a revenue center, also uh, a very vital piece of this is measurement. Um, 
so why how how do you do it uh, so analytics is a key piece of it and uh, leading marketers they are utilizing analytics and are performing their competitors with higher revenue growth and gross profit growth as well and uh, i think most of the reports if you uh, take key reports, uh, every report will tell you that analytics is part of CMS, analytics is part of marketing automation. But the key lies in how do we integrate all these systems together and um, that's what analytics is and does that for you. Uh, moving on to slide 22. Um, uh, and 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 of course the companies that that use analytics they they perform financially better and execute decisions faster. Um, so so that that's how the kind of whole story is uh, when you integrate your CMS, your marketing automation, and your um, and your CRM. So what happens is uh, if you if we just saw the funnel, the sales etc. lead the marketing. S, uh, the M, SQL and so on. So you need to integrate those leads uh, in the entire in all the three databases, and and that's a key where you know where you can track your consumer, create a single view of consumer, and and really find out revenue numbers for each of your channels. Moving on to slide 23, uh, Warren. So, uh, so we also want to answer some of the big business questions uh, when, when we obviously calculate revenue. So basically, how, how can marketing contribute more revenue? What investments should I make in our marketing organizations? Which channels? Which campaigns should we really invest in? Uh, how should we drive awareness and things like that? Uh, and what stages of funnel needs work? So when you integrate all these uh, CRM marketing automation um, uh, systems, uh, you need to see how you integrate the data, how you collect the data, and so on. Where, where, and and that's an iterative cycle because you have to optimize at every step. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, 24. Uh, and and the, and the modern state of analytics. Um, it, it tracks revenue and, and marketers evolving role is to make data driven decisions. So if you look across functions, be it product marketing or demand marketing or marketing operations, and, um, and uh, for each of those functions, uh, you have several teams responsible uh, within the marketing, um, within the marketing um, umbrella. Uh, so and uh, if you want to optimize all of those functions, you, you need to set up goals for every, you, you need to have a measurement plan. In measurement plan, you have to define the goals. What, what do you really want to achieve from this marketing? And tie that goal to your revenue metrics. For example, product revenue, if you're, you're a product development team, product revenue is really important to really measure and that's how you, you, you measure, uh, you move from a demand center to, to a revenue center. Um, if it is marketing automation, um, so basically you have to identify the metrics that, uh, that are important for each channel and how they, those, they, those, those metrics tie back to your revenue. Hmm. Uh, so if you have TV, print, website, CMS, uh, uh, so uh, the idea is for each of those marketing communications, you need to define your goals up front. Before, uh, so the, so that's you. You need to have, sit uh, and think. Uh, what what is your measurement strategy? How can how can you know what what is the cost involved? What 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 is the value that I'm getting from this channel? And and set up goals and events and. Uh, goals, conversion rate, and so on, and ultimately tie it. Uh, we'll talk about a few metrics in a moment, uh, which will show uh, how you can calculate revenue uh, from your various uh, channels. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, which is, uh, so, uh, now, obviously, so this is just, just setting some background. There are, of course, challenges. There are a lot of challenges for marketers to calculate them ultimate marketing ROI. So one is closing the loop, getting the ROI reporting, and reporting across the entire funnel, understanding how marketing influences pipeline and close deals. Um, so you need to really integrate your CRMs with marketing automations. 
um, what I've heard from many of the clients is they have too many reports, many people asking for different kinds of reports. They, they do not have a clear path on which uh, the report demonstrate success and uh, this may be due to lack of the leadership or focus on mm -hmm. defining the metrics across organizations of all sizes uh, and there are several other challenges but but uh, as as Warren just discussed you know you you have to take that as a challenge and uh, and uh, and really turn the demand center into the revenue center for all, all of your channels yeah, I think on this point, Shopa, you know, we, we've done a lot of this work for our clients over the years. I think it's a matter of kind of right-sizing your uh, your reporting for the right audience. Uh, you know, if you're on the front lines really running campaigns and things like that, you know, you want as close to real-time reporting as possible, and you can get pretty granular based on, you know, the campaigns you're running, the uh, the creative you're running with, the messages you're running with, it, that sort of thing. And then as you, you know, abstract that up to management, you know, they can they want may want to look at it in... Uh, you know, weekly or monthly reports, quarterly, that sort of thing. So it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all reporting model that you put in place. It has to be kind of right-sized for uh, for the right uh, viewer of it. And, you know, I've found over the years that a, a little bit of data can be a very dangerous thing if it's out of context. You know, somebody in a, a management meeting brings up a data point and it's it's not contextually put in, in line with what uh, the story should be telling. And you know everybody spins out of control about some issue, you know, uh, bounce rates or you know some something that's happening, and it it could be you know time on site things like that that you know cause these unnecessary discussions where maybe what you did is you actually just optimized the site and improved the uh, the conversion rate, and people are moving through better than they were, so their time on site's shorter. So I've seen where people get you know twisted up about the wrong number without looking in context of you know what it means. So. Uh, yeah, I think the big thing here is to get a common language around what is success and then, um, you know, measure it appropriately based on your uh, frequency and your cadence of when you measure it, um, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and then control the uh, access to that data because, you know, it would be dangerous to your Omniture or even your Google Analytics account or your BI tools to your leadership team uh, without having some coaching in context. Warren, I remember one program that I was involved in that they did an A-B test and people were really, really excited because one of the emails was getting a massively improved um, click-through rate than another, except mm -hmm. that then we looked down and we found that the click-through rate was actually people clicking on the unsubscribe button. And so <laughs> it's, no, really, and so you have to figure out, like, okay, what are people actually looking at and why? Right, exactly. That's where a little bit of information is dangerous, you know, out of context. So, uh, yeah, that's that's so important. Sorry, Shilpa, we'll right. go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really important to look at the right KPIs um, uh, for 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 your measurement strategy. That that's the key. So uh, we'll we'll quickly go through a glossary of behavioral and revenue metrics that uh, that. Uh, that are important for measurement. So we are not saying that behavioral metrics are not important, but it's just a starting point. Ultimately, you have to close. You have to do closed loop marketing where you you are measuring your revenue, and uh, you are measuring the, your revenue as well as attributing the revenue to the right channel. So if you have five channels running, so which channel do we attribute the ROI to? So uh, we we have looked at the behavioral uh, metrics like time on site, unique visitors, click rate, open rate, um, and things like that, but th those really does not give us a complete picture. So we need to calculate metrics like cost per attributed revenue, which is your actual cost of the campaign uh, uh, over the total revenue for the campaign uh, using uh, an appropriate at attribution model, and, and uh, ultimately find your uh, attributed ROI um, uh, basis based on, on your cost uh, as well. So, uh, so as I just said, uh, so we, integration of the systems, uh, the CRM, marketing automation, because uh, your marketing automation is your marketing team kind of, and CRM is your your uh, use. Most of the salespeople use it, but when you tie it 
uh, when when you look at the ultimate ROI, you have to make a single view of customer and and take the data out of every. So you have to do some customized reporting where, where you can take your key metrics from from every uh, every system and then complete that say, uh, cycle to look at the final ROI. And and there are of course steps uh, to determine the marketing ROI. So you, uh, and some of it we have already. Talked, uh, talked before, you have to establish the metrics to measure the ROI. You, you, you need to map the data sources. You need to understand your customer journey and use the right revenue attribution model. Understand what are your cost metrics and then finally establish the reporting and insights. So if you miss any of these steps, um, you know, you, you, your process is not complete and, and you really need to investigate time and fix that. Uh, when when we say that establish the metrics to measure the ROI, so you have to tie it to your main objective. So if, if the objective is to make a sale on the website, then uh, you know how many sales uh, were made, and and metrics like that. If if the metrics is to you know uh, if the goal of the campaign is to generate awareness, then uh, obviously the metric will change. But ultimately, you need to try that awareness uh, to 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 the revenue numbers as well um, in the later cycle. So that's the whole idea of moving from a demand center to a revenue center. Um, and uh, when we talk about the when we talk about mapping the various data sources, how how do we do that? So uh, you, the first step is you once you define the metrics that really matter. So, uh, so you want to see which campaigns delivered the highest return. Um, so then you're, uh, you need to define your metrics. So uh, it can be cost per lead by channel, it would be total revenue by campaign type, you can measure the ROI by every campaign and so on. Uh, and uh, you need to gather data, data sources to calculate your uh, defined uh, metrics. Uh, so Warren, if you can quickly move on to slide 28, 29. Um, so, so that's the whole idea. So, uh, you need to have the right data sources, define the right metrics. Uh, so, for example, cost per lead by channel, total revenue by campaign type, and finally ROI by campaign. So cost per lead by channel is something which will be present in your financial systems or agencies or vendors will tell you total revenue by campaign type uh, could be from your marketing automation system. So, you can see how different metrics are coming from different um, different marketing platforms um, and and uh, in order to calculate the revenue by campaign you will need to go into your CRM and see what is the revenue for for that campaign how many leads really converted and, and closed so that's a kind of measurement strategy you need to put together integrate the data sources collect the right metrics and so on um, moving on to the next slide um, so and we have been talking about this. Uh, integrate the data, provide single view of customer, customized reporting to track revenue attributed to the right channel. And what what all is this also doing for you is you can improve the customer experience as well by 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 doing this kind of structured reporting, um, if you will. So. What campaigns, so, so you define the insights which are needed, which campaign drove the most qualified leads, or uh, which campaigns delivered the highest returns, which campaign uh, type, you know, drive, drive the mo drives the most engagement, and, um, and you define the metrics for each of those insights. For example, which campaigns drove the most qualified lead, that could be your total MQL, marketing qualified lead by campaign, or your total sales accepted lead by campaign. And uh, the data sources will be your CRM or marketing automation, um, uh, so and things like that. And uh, once you map the data sources and metrics, uh, you need to define the possible actions. What actions could you take if you had this information, and how would you that? Uh, how would you? How would you that benefit you? So uh, you. Uh, so ultimately, once you calculate, uh, do your reporting, and then obviously, you, you in order to optimize, you you need to take actions. If you do reporting and don't take actions, that doesn't make sense. So then you have to adjust your marketing channel mix to optimize conversion or invest more in the highest performing campaign types to drive more high quality leads uh, and things like that. 
and and uh, and then review with your marketing managers or campaign managers or marketing operations team is is this what we we are planning to achieve in terms of revenue or uh, or, or other key 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 metrics does it uh, probably make sense right so moving on to the next slide uh, so yeah uh, so uh, integrate the data providing single view of customer that, that's how uh, you do it if you look at the data sources CRM marketing automation internal financial system in order to calculate the ROI you need to really integrate these data sources in terms of reporting you, you need to make sure that your campaigns are tied up by a single key so that you can track your lead across the entire data sources and your web analytics software your your CRM and marketing automation so that's the whole idea so this is the kind of framework on the slide where you know you define the insights you once you define the insights for every channel you you take out the metrics for uh, your goals and for each of these metrics ask your your team where will we get these metrics from and and integrating that entire thing is the key uh, key to do it. Um, it. It's really difficult because sometimes you don't have a single view of customers. Sometimes most of the uh, salespeople are not entering data into CRM correctly. So, so at least uh, you should begin the exercise, and it will be easier when once you do it step by step, and uh, and you can really achieve it as well. Um, moving on to slide uh, 31. Um, Uh, let's talk about uh, attribution uh, a bit uh, on slide 31. So what really is attribution? Uh, most of you might be knowing what is attribution, but just for the benefit of everyone who is on the call, I want to say that it is, it is a set of rules that determines or how the credit for sales and conversions is assigned to the touch points. Um, so it's like you are attributing your ROI to the right channel. Uh, so here is an example. Um, so where various kind of attribution exist in various tools. Um, for an example, we have four attribution models here, which is the last interaction attribution model, in which the last touch point gets all the credit. So this is something uh, that used to happen like uh, years back. Now uh, many of the leading marketers uh, are using the right attribution model so that for example sometimes um, you saw a display ad, uh, sometimes a consumer saw a display ad, searched for it and finally did a direct uh, sale on the website. So if you are able to track, uh, so maybe the, you, uh, so you cannot just um, attribute the conversion to the direct hit on the website because that's not correct. The customer also saw your display ad, search for it. If there was a PPC campaign, he also utilized that to come to the sale. So, so sometimes you cannot do it, but you need to set up your campaigns and the data strategy right so that you can integrate it using a single view. Uh, and and attribute it to the right channel. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so that's the last interaction. But first interaction is you give the credit. You give the entire credit to the first touch point. So the first touch point would receive 100% of the credit for the sale. And and linear attribution model where each touch point gets equal credit uh, for the sale. Uh, and and there is a time decay attribution as well. Uh, you know the touch point which is closest in time to the sale or conversion gets most of the credit. Um, so so things like that. You you, you and need to make is, sure that you are using the right. Yeah. And you want to make sure that attribution. The reason that you're paying a lot of attention to attribution, at least from a content standpoint, is if my strategy is to do more top funnel content, then I want to see what actual channel or what actual piece is really bringing in the most audience and spend my effort and spend especially my AdWord money and budget into that channel. So that's, make sure, so but that's why we pay such close attention to attribution is to make sure that we understand what's really driving our successes. Yeah, to that point, uh, Megan, what I've found in building these over the years is that you have to kind of, it's not a static, you know, set it and forget it kind of model. You have to kind of start with your base assumptions of uh, 
putting points to certain channels and assigning value based on you know your historical knowledge and what you've, you've uh, kind of seen in the past. But then you have to kind of watch it and monitor it on an ongoing basis and see what's really moving the needle for revenue and then adjust it. So um, you know it, it, it is in that kind of test and learn category, at least in my mind with these models because uh, a lot of the base assumptions that you went into thinking end up being disproven over time. And your your weighting of these different uh, attributions changes with uh, with reality. So uh, some of this has to be kind of you know monitored and then optimized over time. Yeah, yeah, that that's totally uh, correct, Warren. Um, you, as digital is all about embracing the change, and everything in digital changes so quickly, and so is analytics as well. Uh, so you need to redefine your measurement strategy and change everything or, or uh, when I say change, you know, what you're measuring is working today might not work tomorrow because uh, you, the scenarios have changed. Uh, so mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, to, uh, to your point, Megan, uh, point attribution for content, uh, suppose uh, we are doing this webinar, uh, uh, if you're registering for a webinar that's less point attribution, but if you're watching the webinar or attending the webinar, that's more point attribution. So so, so that's the whole idea of attribution is um, if you're opening the email, for example, it might be less attributing than, you know, you're forwarding the email to a friend, uh, you might want to attribute more points to that. Uh, so attribution has uh, has different um, different scenario, can be done in different, different ways, but uh, you have to make sure that you're doing it in the right way. Um, so, uh, so when when we say campaign attribution, uh, in in terms when you are measuring the ROI for your short term campaigns on, uh, on slide thirty two Warren, um, uh, so sh in short term the last touch point or the first touch point might work because the consumer has not been through several channels which campaign costs the revenue generation so that might work but if you have long term uh, long term uh, purchase cycle or life cycle of a customer then custom attribution or some kind of evenly distribution distributed attribution uh, works uh, for your measurement strategy or strategic campaign um, planning and and finding the ROI ultimately um, Moving on to the next slide, uh, and calculating the ROI, as we said, is not just straightforward. You need to understand your cost metrics as well. What is the cost of your campaign value proposition? What problems are you solving for your audience? And wh what does that cost you? Um, so uh, uh, unless you understand your cost metrics, uh, you really cannot find your ROI. So uh, what is your cost for delivery as well for various channels? What is the cost of the offer uh, and things like that? So re you really need to make sure that you understand your cost metrics uh, properly. So uh, so we d define five steps in the beginning. Um, uh, and those five steps, uh, those five steps were uh, just to reiterate of what we just discussed: is you establish the metrics to measure the ROI, you map the data sources, understand your customer journey, and use the right revenue attribution model. Understand your cost metrics, and then finally establish your reporting and insights. So moving on to the reporting and insights slide, that you you need to track your key performance indicators over time. And, and it can be done in several ways. You just have to find what is the right method for you. Um, so if on slide 34, uh, you can see um, uh, the here we are tracking the things over time. So how inquiry to, uh, uh, inquiry to marketing qualified lead or marketing qualified lead to sales accepted lead and, uh, and so on. How has that changed over time? And uh, so that really is the key. And uh, and from SQL to close, uh, you will see there is a 32% improvement from, uh, so this is just a sample illustration of reporting, but uh, there is data from uh, several, several channels here from your marketing automation and your CRM. Um, so, uh, so, so that is how, that is how, you know, you can establish some benchmarks, do some trending um, uh, to do your final reporting. 
and then finally your uh, uh, and then finally your uh, uh, you look at the revenue numbers. Uh, so this, these are just sample illustrative uh, dashboards where for every campaign you are looking at your revenue numbers. What was the actual cost? What was the total revenue by campaign? What was the ROI? And what is the incremental revenue? Uh, so uh, what is the predicted rate of return if we spend more? Uh, so, so that's kind of how uh, you should put together a measurement plan, um, and and, uh, and uh, establish your revenue center, um, if you will. Um, yeah. So we have ten minutes now. Um, I think uh, I'm done, Megan. So do you want to proceed with uh, questions? Absolutely. So if anyone has any questions, you can write them into the chat box and we will get to them. Um, okay, here's one. This is about, does a revenue-focused approach to marketing contribute only to the bottom line of a business or is there a way to measure top-line impact as well? Yeah, you know, I, I can speak to that. We. Um, when we look at it, we basically look at holistically across the whole enterprise. So basically, we uh, we explore the revenue, uh, which is the top line impact. So how much is are we moving the needle based on, you know, getting more qualified leads down the funnel and you know sales ready leads ultimately um, into the pipelines and across the finish line. Um, but then you know the other way to look at it is to kind of look at the customer service and the full customer lifetime value um, metrics. And you know there's a, a whole kind of science and art around, you know, engagement hmm. and metrics that you can also measure for um, for doing, you know, you know, even cost avoidance, which talks to the bottom line uh, profitability of a company. So as digital becomes more and more pervasive, we can look at things like self-service and uh, people actually, you know, avoiding calling a 1-800 number and, you know, right. spending time one-on-one -on, -one on a kind of a linear telephone uh, conversation. So you can basically look at it as a uh, a cost avoidance metric as well, which which directly impacts the bottom line. Great, and um, here's one. Michael says, "How do you connect social media investment with revenue?" Yeah, this is a uh, an interesting one. This is where I spoke a little bit about this earlier. How people rushed into the social media ranks um, really with without as much thoughtfulness as they might give a uh, you know a, a traditional campaign. The way I look at social is, uh, you know, it's another uh, set of channels that you have to look at, um, and basically, you know, you're doing demand generation, you're doing thought leadership, you're basically, uh, you know, the the way social is instead of uh, looking at it as a campaign, though, I I tend to frame it as starting a conversation. So you can do um, new metrics which are like, you know, uh, turn on conversations, or you can you can have some fun on it as far as you know what the uh, what the metrics right. is. Uh, even things like return on influence. You know, if you can really become a uh, a star contributor in a uh, Yahoo uh, user group or a LinkedIn group or something like that, then you become a go-to party for people. And there's ways to kind of measure those uh, things as well. And then from a traditional lens, you can actually look at um, calls to action in social channels, which ultimately will probably drive into a landing page or a web experience. And then the uh, the post uh, post click or post-action uh, tracking can be measured in traditional uh, digital ways like, you know, your, your web behavior and your downloads and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I find it's also, it's not just social media. Each channel will be a little bit different. I found that on a content side, especially at B2B, you really can drive direct conversions from something like the LinkedIn group pretty effectively. That's where people share their thought leadership. Um, whereas something like a Google Plus or uh, your Twitter is a little bit more about brand, about engagement, about uh, top funnel visibility. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Google Plus has a lot of impact on SEO for a lot of companies. And so that it's understanding how people are using the individual social channels as opposed to saying, you know, kind of homogenizing social media in general and thinking it's one thing. Yeah, exactly. And people make that mistake even with the advanced tools that they now have available, like you know Hootsuite or things like that. They'll they'll do. Uh, I've seen misuses of that. Well, they'll, they'll blast the same message and the same content, you know, out across multiple channels in an automated fashion. For me, that isn't really automated marketing. It's kind of like more of a spray and pray strategy. Yeah. 
blasting it out there, that, that can be more harmful than good. So you, have, you do have to be thoughtful about the, uh, you know, the end destination points of the, the distribution. Yeah, anywhere you're trying to just outshout people, regardless of which megaphone you're using, it seems to be declining in effectiveness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what metrics will let us measure how our leads are being qualified so that we can establish a high conversion rate? Um, yeah, I think, go ahead, Shilpa. Yeah, so basically I think we, we talked about some of these metrics so you can have a marketing qualified lead. Um, so you have to establish, <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry, establish a funnel where, you know, you have a marketing qualified lead where marketing uh, matures to sales ready and then you have sales accepted lead where sales re, uh, sales uh, can reject the lead and, and sense to nurturing again. Uh, you can have a sales qualified opportunity uh, where, where the sales, um, if the opportunity stalls, the sales sense to uh, nurture again. So things like that. So you have to establish your funnel to really look at your clo closed win rate and and uh, and establish uh, the right KPIs. Okay, great. Um, it looks like we have potentially one more. Um, we talked about behavioral attributes. The question is, what behavioral attributes uh, should we measure to connect our prospects, the digital footprint, to revenue? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, there, this is a, I'll give it a little bit of a technical slant, but you know, the, we um, we tend to speak in what we call a trifecta model, where basically you integrate your CRM with your uh, with your uh, web content, which captures all the behavioral information. And if you have a marketing automation tool, there's it actually that behavioral data can be really rich. You can basically um, the the top the easiest things to start tracking are you know, what was their point of entry, you know, where did they come in from, you know, you can look at things like their IP address, you know, where, where are they, you know, what's their geographic uh, locale, um, you can look at things like their segmentation that they tripped into on the site, you basically divide your site up into uh, to segments, so behavioral data around segmentation can be really